Welcome again. Um, so we're going to go to the, the next session. The next sessions we uh, will also have the same uh, structures. So we're going to have the uh, first the keynote and then the panel. The keynote uh, this time we will have a duet. So we will have uh, Ericsson and TDC Net on a stage, but they will share their experience. And then after that, we would have a panel with some uh, experienced um, uh, participants and uh, speakers from uh, both the aviation and also from the telco ecosystem. So with no further ado, I want you to introduce the keynote speakers. So we're going to have a Capi Mittel from the Ericsson Drone Mobility and Liv uh, Tormund from TDC Net. So please, guys, come to the stage and I, the floor is your. Please, can you welcome the, our speakers? So we're gonna be so my name is uh, Leif Ridwell, and I work for the TDC Net in uh, Denmark, the incumbent operator. And with me, I have... My name is Kapil Mittal. I'm from Ericsson Drone Mobility. And we're here today to talk about a project that's been running in Denmark in the past uh, few years now, actually, uh, with our partner, Ericsson Drone Mobility, and key partners from the drone ecosystem, um, and even the Danish authorities, and it's co-funded by the Danish government. Uh, so we've been inside this mutual project looking into how we can make, um, if not to connect beyond the sky, but at least connect towards the sky of reality to um, pave road for new use cases around autonomous, uh, autonomous flights for drones. Um, so, first question you might ask is, what is a connection? We all have different inspirations on what connections are, but to us as a mobile operator, uh, what we realized is that we've been doing connections for multiple years, and we've seen that there is a nice traction inside the drone uh, industry. We, there are more and more drones flying during various tasks that are important. They really gain traction. Um, they all rely on moving data both to control the drone, but definitely also to do uh, video offload. Uh, so common for this is the need for not just connectivity, but actually the need for wide area mission critical connectivity. And you could ask why drones? Well, the important thing to us and the really exciting thing to us is that drones are flying close to the ground where we've been covering customers for quite a while now and continue to do coverage, improve our networks. So you have a new potential user close to the ground, really requiring mission critical and unlocking new, uh, new opportunities there. So we believe that we would have a competitive advantage by looking in this direction, uh, using our existing asset, enhancing the asset where needed to support their need for this mission critical connectivity. So what we've been doing so far in this project is um, jointly with the partners, try to understand the main bottlenecks that we are facing to be able to go towards um, this future of autonomous drones flying around. Um, you might know that in uh, EU level, there is a um, lot of legislation going on to normalize it between the European countries. Uh, there is a concept called the EU space that is under development. Um, and that is a designated slice, different way of using slicing in the airspace uh, that will uh, be allowed under specific conditions for drones to fly fully autonomous. So enabling drone operators uh, not to be uh, enforced to have a spotter, uh, enabling them to be sitting somewhere several kilometers away in a control center, letting the drone do its task and have full trust that the drone will act safely and be able to um, yeah, basically do whatever it's set out to do without having to, uh, to uh, visually monitor it all the time. Hence the beyond visual line of sight which we believe is a key capability on unleashing the full potential of drones. Otherwise, it's going to be very uh, cumbersome. It's inefficient when you have to have a, a lot of human labor to operate the drones. Um, and of course, this enablement of uh, effectivity is where we see that if we as an operator come in, we can really make a difference. Uh, and that's one part. The other part is, of course, that we are seeing a potential here to um, by placing us in the right position, um, motivate us to be an active part of the ecosystem and unleash new revenue. But in order to do so, we can't wait for this to be fully matured. We need to show that we want to solve 
new challenges and we need to be able to show that we can solve it with partners. Um, so we've actually, uh, GSMA has published uh, a white paper um, on the work that uh, we've been doing in the Genius Project. Um, so I'd suggest if you're interested that uh, please look it up and if you want to know further then please uh, come and uh, come by at uh, our booth here in uh, Hall 4 uh, at the innovation part and uh, let's have a chat on it by all means. Uh, and on that note, to sort of uh, go a bit more in detail on the system, I'll hand over to uh, Kapil from Ericsson Drone. Super good. Uh, thanks, Leif. So, you know, Ericsson, you know, we've been working very closely with the uh, stakeholders in aviation and telecom to understand what are the challenges that the drone ecosystem has. And more than that, how 5G can be effective in the digital airspace. So on your slide, if you look at, uh, Leif, can you just Sorry. give a little bit of line of sight here? <laughs> On the left, you see on the ground, this is a drone typically on the ground. And if you look at how well defined the cell associations are, and that's pretty much coming from all the base stations from a typical mobile system geared for and designed for ground coverage. But look at how a drone experiences when it's at say at 120 to 150 meters, the typical range where a drone pretty much flies today. If you look at this, so much of cell dilutions. It's not about lack of coverage there, it's about lack of the right coverage. There's so much of cell associations happen because the drone is now getting connected erratically from the side lobes of the antennas at the ground. What it helps is further in dilution, there's multiple handovers happening, the drone gets confused where to get lashed on. There's so much of signaling happening. It further has a ripple effect in terms of interference. It has a further ripple effect because it directly starts impacting the ground coverage capacity. At Ericsson Research, we've been trying to find solutions to these problems. For example, using the 5G massive MIMO beam forming, on the right-hand side, you see that's a technique where drone has a much better cell association, far better than the side lobes. We've been trying to understand how the drone ecosystem would behave at such level when the third dimensional coverage gets effective. We've also been trying to understand what other assets do we have in the telecom networks that can further help the drone ecosystem. Let's have a look at uh, some of the solutions that Ericsson Drone Mobility have been working on. Imagine enterprise drones flying beyond visual line of sight, securely and efficiently authorizing response and real-time decisions to critical emergencies. With Ericsson Drone Mobility, it's possible. Regions worldwide are experiencing longer wildfire seasons as a direct result of climate change. In forest fire response, time is of the essence, and drones can play a vital role in gathering situational awareness, locating and controlling hotspots, and directing the efforts of firefighters faster. Leveraging mobile network intelligence, Ericsson Drone Mobility's cloud-based drone mission control platform empowers decision makers to connect and control drones securely using telco-grade encryption, data security solutions, remote control, and live streaming of drone data. Ericsson Drone Mobility uses open APIs from mobile networks and aggregators like Vonage to help drone operators complete their missions and comply with beyond visual line of sight regulations. Mobile network capabilities like positioning, authentication, and performance can help drone operators monitor in real time and fly more safely by avoiding crowds of people and areas of poor connectivity. At Ericsson, we partner with mobile operators in building three-dimensional 5G networks and mission-critical infrastructure that will help realize the full potential of the drone industry and the broader UTM ecosystem so that the imaginative becomes possible. Good. Yeah. So as you could see, in real time, you can leverage the intelligence coming from telecom operators. And it's not only about coverage and providing the right positioning to provide the right uh, route for a drone. It's other assets as well. For example, when a drone reaches the point of inspection, it may require a higher bandwidth, a bandwidth where it can start streaming 4K videos and uh, images of higher resolution back to the command center. So with a click of a button, using the network exposure capabilities of a telecom network, it can demand a higher bandwidth. 
And that's the project that we've been trying to do, a trials with multiple operators globally. So assets are already there. And that's what mobile operators are thinking in terms of monetizing it further. Let's talk a little bit about money. How do we monetize it? So on the left-hand side, you see different value chain propositions. A drone operator can reach out to a mobile operator from a, for different needs. And I think that's what defines uh, the business proposition for a mobile operator as well. A mobile operator could simply be in a pure connectivity where they're just selling the SIM cards. However, we believe in our association with mobile operators, there's so much that a mobile operator can leverage uh, their assets. For example, if you look at the middle section where it's all about APIs in the mobile network, be it quality of service on demand, be it uh, real-time information, location tracking as well, mobile operator can start exposing those APIs directly to the drone ecosystem, the UTM players, or perhaps they can use aggregators like Vonage which are experts in terms of uh, exposing those APIs with a uniform experience. Further up the value chain, mobile operators have also been thinking about uh, bundling drone mission control platforms like Ericsson Drone Mobility, which understand their platforms so that they can give better value addition to their enterprises. So again, as a nutshell, depending on how a mobile operator would want to play a role in the value chain, they can already start monetizing their assets. But I, we believe collaboration between mobile operators, ecosystem, drone manufacturers is absolutely key to make it enable. Thank you.